What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial and this is going to be a tutorial on the platform Effector 2D. Effectors have been newly introduced in Unity 5 so if you don't have Unity 5 then I suggest you download and install Unity 5 and then come and watch the video. Alright so the platform Effector 2D applies various platform behavior such as one-way collisions, removal of side friction bounds etc. Colliders that you use with the Effector would typically not be set as triggers so that other colliders can collide with it. Now just real quick I'm going to set up the scene over here all I'm gonna do is create a bunch of quads and uh, stretch them out and uh, give them different names and also attach box collider 2d components to them all right so what we have done here is we have uh, created a bunch of quads and just resize them and rename them and of course attach a box collider 2d components to them now on the player object you need to attach a rigid body 2d component and then attach a new script or uh, create a new script called move script 01 open this up in mono develop now we are just gonna write a simple move script public float move force public float jump force and uh, private rigid body 2d in the start method add a reference to players rigid body component rigid body 2d component and then in the update method type float edge equals input dot get axis horizontal multiplied by move force then if h is not equal to zero our body which is a rigid body dot add force vector two dot right multiplied by h so this is going to be for our movement and next if input dot get key down key code dot space our body dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force this is going to be our jump code so save the script and go back to unity set move force to say 20 and jump force to probably 400 let's run the game and see if this works okay so the jump force is enough and the move force is fine as well. Before we continue, make sure to check freeze rotation on the Z axis because that's going to stop the player from spinning when he hits a corner. Alright, next select the ledge which is this one of the quads that we have resized and hit Control shift a which is to add a new component and add a platform effector 2d now you'll see a warning over here this effector will not function until there is at least one enabled 2d collider with used by effector checked on this game object this basically means that over here on the box collider 2d component you have to check used by effector because there has to be at least one collider which has used by effector checked and uh, of course for platform effector 2d you do not want this collider to be a trigger if you do accidentally set it to is trigger you'll get a warning here as well all right so let's take a look at some of the properties of platform effector 2d first of all you have use collider mask if this is checked then you will be able to select which layers you want this platform to respond to and if you leave it unchecked then it's just going to use the global collision matrix we'll get into uh collider masks later once we are done with all of these other properties next you have use one way now to see this working let's uh, first of all make sure it's checked then run the game and go below this platform and jump as you can see in both the game view and the scene view we have a one-way platform if you uncheck one way and then click back in the game scene uh, sorry in the game view and try to jump it's not going to go through 
Next, we have surface arc. To understand how surface arc works, you need to understand uh, collision normals. Basically, when two objects collide, they have a collision normal which points in a specific uh, direction. If, for example, a circle falls onto the top edge of a box, then the collision normal points up. Now, we have this gizmo over here which uh, shows which shows us the surface arc if the collision normal is within this arc then there is a collision and the object does not pass through if the collision normal is outside of this arc then there isn't a collision and the object just passes through it now on this box collider it might be a little confusing if you still don't understand how collision normals work so i'm gonna create a sphere and enlarge it and remove its sphere collider and instead add a circle collider 2D and also a platform effector 2D. Let's disable this ledge object for now and focus on this. Check used by effector and uh, let's reduce the size a little so you can see the surface arc better. All right, so now as you can see, the surface arc is set to 180. That is covering half of this sphere, which is pretty much a circle right now. So at this point, if you run the game and try and collide with the sphere within that surface arc, you can see that collision is actually taking place. On the other hand, if you go outside that arc, collision is not registered. Now let's try increasing this. Increase surface arc to, say, to... 60 or somewhere nearby that amount and then click back in the game game view and then try colliding anywhere within this arc as you can see collision is taking place but when you go outside the arc collision do doesn't take place if you change this to full 360 then you just collide with it from all angles. All right, now let's disable the sphere. Hit Control Shift A, sorry, Shift Alt A, and enable the ledge. So in this case, surface arc is set to 180. So collision is gonna take place if you hit the left side, the top, or the right side, not if you hit the bottom. Let's run the game and see. You hit the left side, collision happens. You hit the right side and the top, collision happens. But from down, it doesn't happen. You change this to 360. Collision doesn't happen even from the bottom. And if you change it to, say, 1, uh, you cannot see it right now. probably change it to 5 so you can see it slightly over here then collision takes place only from the top not from the left or right side or even from the bottom so I hope this is enough for you to understand how uh, uh, what what the uh, surface arc does I suggest you try playing around with different shapes to see what effect surface arc uh, values have what effect different surface arc values have on those shapes so moving on next we have use side friction now in order to demonstrate use side friction and use side bounce we are first going to need to create a physics material uh, sorry a physics 2d material the name doesn't matter i have done a tutorial on physics 2d materials uh, i'm gonna mention the link up on the screen right now and in the description down below so check it out if you don't know how physics 2d materials work so we have friction and bounciness uh, currently we are going to leave them at their default values drag and drop it on the player object Basically what you're doing is uh, adding it over here. Let's move this up a little and enlarge it because for this particular example, it's required. All right, so right now, use side friction and use side bounce are both unchecked. So let's play the game and see what happens when I purposely hit this platform. I'm hitting it and my finger is still on the key, just so you know. Uh, that is the reason why I used this code 
instead of just setting the velocity because uh, in order to demonstrate this example I needed to add force so as you can see the cube just slips now if I check use side friction and click back in the game game view now there's some friction it comes down slowly uh, of course if you just hit it and leave the key then it's gonna come down faster but if you're applying force then it's gonna come down really slow because uh, friction is being applied to the side and the same goes for the other side as well next let's take a look at side bounce let's increase this to say 0 0.4 I'm doing 0 0.4 because 1 is going to be way too much. And also, let's check use side bounce. Run the game. As you can see, it's already bouncing on the ground. And now it's bouncing off the platform as well. So that is what use side bounce does. Alright, so now that you know these properties, let's take a look at use collider masks. Now when you check use collider mask, you get another option over here that says collider mask. This basically lets you select which layers you want uh, this platform effector to interact with. Currently everything is selected and that is why you see all of these layers selected. Uh, say for example, we set our player's layer to water. It can be anything but for this example, I'm setting it to water. And we select nothing so that everything is unchecked and then we select default so this platform is supposed to respond to a collider which is on the default layer our player however is on the water layer so let's see what happens as you can see the player just goes through the object there's no collision taking place and if you select uh, our platform and change it to water or uh, well default in water and click back in the game view now there's collision taking place so yeah that's pretty much it this is how the platform effector 2d component works so I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.